In the name of God among us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One of the devices used by the preacher is to start by giving examples or a story of some aspect of life or other in order to draw people in to an experience that they themselves might recognize, have heard of, or have shared at one time or another. No such device or examples are needed this Christmas. We reach this festival in 2020 with our own unique and very personal experiences of this year, and we have our shared and communal insights into it all also. No examples are needed. We ourselves are the evidence that bubbles up emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually as we come today to celebrate the birth of the Word made flesh. This has been a year of heroism, stoicism, collaboration, voluntary effort, and human generosity that has gone further than even the Good Samaritan might have gone. All of these have been, as if I need to say it, in response to a year of separation, deprivation, anxiety, exhaustion, wounds, vulnerability, loss, and uncertainty. And we bring all these things, good and bad, to our worship today. Uncertainty is the word I want to latch on to in this short message. For short, it has to be. The pandemic is even clipping the wings and trimming the sails of the preacher this year. From the outset, there has been uncertainty, and there still is. Will I get it? How do you get it? Is it safe? Is it wise or prudent? What should I do? Way back in March, the questions, now answered, or at least we think answered for now, were, should I wear a mask? Is it safe to sing or not? It has been a journey through uncertainty. Will it open? When will we be back to normal? Will the schools open or stay open? What is essential and non-essential? How will I get my medicine or even my food? Or more profoundly, when will I see my children? Will I see you again? Will I survive? Even the advertising people latched onto the uncertainty. In an ad for one supermarket chain, the persistent question was, is he coming? Is he definitely coming? And so we come this year in the bleakness of this midwinter, the words of Christina Rossetti's poem, And I, for one, don't need to agonize over the question, what can I give him? Give my heart, yes, but not in a twee sort of way. I want to dump, yes, dump everything that is pent up in this year at the feet of the manger because there is nowhere else to turn or to go. And that's okay. For the manger is the word made flesh. God who shares our experiences and knows what it's like. This baby is Emmanuel. God is with us. He is the light shining in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome that light. And as I dump all this at his feet at this altar today, I look around the manger scene And I see that everyone there in that original story, familiar as it is, has done the same thing in response to their own uncertainty. Joseph, my fiancée is pregnant. I'm not the father. What do I do now? Mary, 
This strange visitor says not to be afraid, but I'm terrified. What's this all about? I hadn't planned on having a child now. I'm actually planning my wedding day, and what will Joseph think? What will everybody else think? The shepherds getting on with their nighttime work up in the hills. What's that hubbub? Is it the sound of singing? What's this talk of good news? It certainly sounds too good to be true, even off the wall. We better go and check it for ourselves. And the Magi, something strange is happening in the night sky. We're wise. We've studied these things. We know about the stars, but this is unfamiliar. I suppose we could take a risk of following and going into the unknown to see where it leads us. Even the powers that be, King Herod, are faced with uncertainty. What's this rumor about a new king? And of all those in the story, Herod alone does not go to see, to check it out. He alone does not go to kneel and worship. And as a result, there's more uncertainty for the newborn, for Mary and for Joseph. It's not safe for them to go back to their home place in Nazareth. They find themselves as refugees, escaping to the safety of Egypt. And the irony of that, the place of slavery for their people all those centuries before, becomes the place now of sanctuary. Yes, friends, this has been a year of many challenges, sadness, and griefs. But, as I say, there has also been stoicism, determination, valiant effort, and voluntary generosity, Christian love. I seldom end a sermon by quoting a hymn, but exceptionally, perhaps, in an unprecedented year for us here, I venture a verse from one of my favorites, which, of course, quotes the verse of the psalm we already heard. It's an epiphany hymn, so it's appropriate, therefore, to these 12 days, written by the Irish clergyman Dr. J.S.B. Monsell, a person greatly influenced by the Oxford movement. He and his wife Anne lost their eldest son in a shipwreck as he was on his way to fight in the Crimea in 1855. The boy was 18. Their eldest daughter died when she was 28. In spite of all that, perhaps because of it, who knows, he wrote 300 hymns. Monsell himself later had an accident he fell off a rock, injured himself, and died from infection in the wound. The hymn refers to our burden of carefulness. Carefulness, which means heavy care, worries, and anxieties. And what he wrote seems like an appropriate invitation as we come to meet the Lord in word and sacrament this Christmas at the end of this ghastly year of 2020 and as we journey towards the uncertainty of 2021. He wrote, O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, bow down before him his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of lowliness, kneel and adore him. The Lord is his name. Lo, at his feet lay thy burden of carefulness. High on his heart he will bear it for thee. Comfort thy sorrows and answer thy prayerfulness, guiding thy steps as may best for thee be.